My name is uh, Dr. Desmond D'Souza. I'm a thoracic surgeon here at the James Cancer Hospital at the Ohio State University uh, Wexner Medical Center. Um, I'm a thoracic surgeon who specializes in the uh, minimally invasive treatment of lung and esophageal cancer. And I've been here at the James for the last uh, five going on six years. Uh, November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. And so I would like to share with you the over all impact that lung cancer has uh, on society, us as Americans, and what we're doing as uh, cancer surgeons and physicians to make a dent in that, uh, that impact. And so I'd like to start off with just cer certain uh, facts that are maybe a lot of you may not be aware of uh, with lung cancer. Uh, lung cancer is actually the number one cancer killer uh, in the United States. Uh, roughly about 235,000 people or Americans are diagnosed with lung cancer uh, every year, and roughly about 135,000 Americans uh, die every year with advanced uh, lung cancer. In fact, uh, lung cancer is the number one cancer killer in both men and women. It's also the number one cancer killer across all ethnic groups in America. Uh, in fact, if you were to tally up the number of cancer deaths from breast, uh, prostate, colon, and pancreatic cancer, lung cancer surpasses uh, all four of them combined uh, when compared to cancer deaths um, uh, for Americans. So it, is a, it, it has a huge impact uh, on us as Americans. And unfortunately, it has a, a stigma of smoking uh, having a causal relationship to uh, the incidence of lung cancer. And so uh, for, for decades now, lung cancer really hasn't get it, got the spotlight that several other cancers uh, like breast cancer, prostate, and colon cancer uh, have received, but the impact is enormous. And I'd like to share with you certain uh, uh, strategies that we've developed at cancer centers across the United States, uh, the United States Preventative Services Task Force and the um, Commission on Cancer have put together to mitigate some of these uh, risk factors and to, uh, to allow for early diagnosis, intervention, um, uh, and, and treatment. Lung cancer is often referred to as the silent killer. And the reason behind that is because the vast majority of, uh, of lung cancers don't cause it, any symptoms until it's too late. So the presence of a persistent cough, uh, coughing up blood, unexplained weight loss, shortness of breath should all be red flags uh, if you have a, a, a history of smoking uh, or uh, someone who would be considered high risk. And uh, in high risk, we'll get into that a little bit more, but if you have any of those symptoms, you should be having uh, a conversation with your, your primary care physician or your pulmonologist to perhaps uh, look at lung cancer screening. And so lung cancer screening was a strategy that was developed uh, in order to diagnose lung cancer uh, at an earlier stage. Uh, several other cancers like breast cancer has mammograms, uh, prostate cancer has PSA levels, cervical cancer has pap smears. Until fairly recently, lung cancer had no screening tool. And so uh, what lung cancer screening is, it's, it's a simple one minute CT scan. It's a, a patient comes in, meets with a physician. And if they're deemed a high risk candidate and then high risk would be someone who is between the age of uh, 55 to 77, uh, has a history of smoking uh, a pack a day for 30 years or two packs a day for 15 years, is still a current smoker or quit smoking within the last fif uh, 15 years, is, is it the ideal target population. Now, uh, there can be ex exemptions to that rule. So if you're between the age of roughly between 50 to 80, have a 20 year pack history of uh, smoking. So that, that is someone who smoked a pack a day for, for 20 years, or as a current smoker or quit within the last 10 to 15 years, you may be eligible for a low dose CT screening study. Uh, these are offered at cancer centers across the United States. So we at Ohio State and the James Cancer Hospital are privileged to have two sites in the greater Columbus area that offer low dose uh, lung cancer screening. And so this is a, a quick visit with a physician who then orders a CT scan if the patient meets criteria. Uh, a CT scan is a non-invasive study uh, where a patient lays down on the scanner table and then passes through the scanner. Uh, the scan literally takes less than 60 seconds. Uh, it's non-invasive, there's no pain, there's no IVs, there's no contrast, so patients don't have to get 
um, IV contrast or oral contrast. They didn't meet with uh, a pulmonologist or a primary care physician who specializes in uh, uh, reading these scans. They then get real-time feedback on what that scan looks like. And if there is any abnormalities, a physician or pulmonologist will then make recommendations of whether to pursue a biopsy or to continue with surveillance. These scans are often covered by uh, CMS or insurance companies uh, if patients meet criteria. If patients do not meet criteria and have high risk factors, so say for instance, your spouse or significant other uh, smoke for several years indoors, or you have high radon exposure or lived in an old house with high radon levels, uh, you may be eligible for a low dose uh, lung cancer screening study. Uh, several cancer hospitals across the United States, including the James, do offer low dose CT uh, screening for patients who are outside those criteria at a fraction of the cost of what it would uh, cost you to get a, a, a CT scan. Uh, several patients asked me, uh, what, uh, are there any side effects? The, the dose of radiation that patients get with these scans is very low. In fact, you get exposed to the same amount of radiation or less if you were to take a flight from New York to LA. So these are low dose screening studies. They're offered to patients who are high risk on an annual basis, just like you would a mammogram for if you were, had high, high, if you were high risk for breast cancer or a pap smear or a PSA level or colonoscopy for, for, that, uh, for that matter. Uh, the, these studies, low dose lung cancer screens are a very effective strategy and can reduce uh, a patient's risk of death from lung cancer uh, by about 20% when compared to screening x-rays for that matter. We know x-rays are not the most useful tools. So if you're going in every year for a, a history, uh, for a, uh, your history and annual physical with your um, primary care physician, x-rays often don't pick up the subtle findings that you would see on a CT scan to, to be able to detect these cancers early. So lung cancer screening is, very, is a very effective tool. If you are uh, within that patient population, high risk group that I just talked about, talk to your primary care physician, talk to your pulmonologist to see whether you are a candidate for uh, low dose lung cancer screening. And the reason we do that is we want to be able to pick up these cancers early. Uh, we know that if we, we can detect lung cancer early, we can offer uh, uh, surgery or effective other effective treatments like SPRT to cure these cancers. If, if a patient's diagnosed with a stage one lung cancer, they have a very um, a good prognosis. Uh, a lot of times a surgeon like myself can go in there with minimally invasive robotic techniques uh, and remove the cancer. Um, and we know for a fact that surgery uh, uh, is an effective tool in treating cancers and often curative. Uh, if the tumor is resected or removed in its entirety and there's no spread elsewhere outside the lung, uh, then these patients often don't require chemo, don't require radiation, and just get uh, put on a surveillance plan thereafter. So it, it is very important. It makes a huge difference in detecting cancers early uh, because we have great uh, surgical tools to remove cancers and cure these cancers for patients with early stage um, uh, lung cancer. Um, uh, and, and with that, you know, I, I'd be happy to take any questions uh, uh, from the audience. This was just a quick overview, and hopefully, I've elaborated on some of the the importance of lung cancer uh, screening, the impact that lung cancer has on society, and strategies that we have like lung cancer screening. Uh, early intervention with robotic surgery uh, uh, and, the, and the effect it can have on reducing the burden of disease that lung cancer carries uh, on society. And with that, uh, I'll close and, and take any questions from the audience. If you have any questions, be, 